Okay, hi everybody. Um, thank you for being here today. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, large-scale graph visualization in the browser. So, but first, um, I want to let you know about some goals about this presentation. So, uh, the goals are uh, for you to know uh, why large-scale visualization are important. Then, uh, to be able to choose wisely between technologies. There's a lot of technologies out there. So the, the aim is for you to be able to choose between them. And finally, um, we've, uh, at Linkerius, we've, challenged, we've um, solved some challenges. And uh, we will share this experience with you uh, so that you will be able to, to solve those challenges yourself, too. But first, uh, a little presentation. Uh, at Linkerius, uh, we are full employees. We do a graph visualization software. Uh, for humans, uh, and we were funded in 2013. Um, for, as for myself, I'm a full-stack JavaScript engineer. Um, I worked at the French Department of Defense before working for Linkurious, and at a New York City-based startup called uh, Quandora. So first, uh, why large graph visualization in the browser? So first, why graph visualization? I think you all know uh, why it's useful. Otherwise, we won't be here. So for example, if you take uh, tabular data, and then uh, you want to see if uh, some people have the same security number. So if this is a fraud detection case. Um, with a graph, Jean and Melinda here has the same security number. So that's very easy to spot with graph visualization that two people have the same uh, social security number. Whereas in tabular data, it's quite complicated to see it. So this is why graph visualization. Then, why in the browser? First, uh, it's obvious that the cost of deployment and maintenance is much lower when uh, you use a web application. You just have to deploy your web app on your server, and then all your clients are web browser. You all have web browser on your tablets, on your mobile phones, on your laptops, everywhere. So that's uh, a good point. Uh, there's also uh, the uh, JavaScript engine performance, which is in incredibly increasing thanks to the browser war. You all know that like Google, um, Mozilla are all fighting to get the most of users, and they're doing that by creating more and more powerful uh, JavaScript engines. So this is good for us, because the po powerful it gets, uh, the more data you can like, uh, show into the browser. And finally, you can enable collab collaboration through the web. Um, when you use browser, you can, uh, like you use Google Docs, you can share, you can uh, work uh, simultaneously on the same document, and that thing you cannot do when you're in local. So, and finally, what's large scale? Uh, well, that's a very good way to spot clusters. Uh, in this example, it's very easy to see that you have one cluster here, another here, and another here. So, having an overview of the data. Uh, unable to to spot uh, very uh, good patterns. So what's on the market to do that in the browser? Um, there's sig sigma.js, uh, key lines, Tom Sawyer, Cityscape. I, I think uh, some of them are with us right now. Um, but uh, what we felt it was like those libraries are very good to display data. But um, when, once you want to interact with it, uh, in a very uh, easy manner, uh, it's not enough. So that's why we built uh, linkerius.js. So that's a library which we built uh, ourselves. It's open source for um, open source projects, and it's available under a commercial license for uh, commercial products. Its core is based on sigma.js, which has amazing performance uh, into displaying data. And we augmented it with uh, multiple, multiple plugins so that you can add functionalities to the library. So it's very easy. It's a modular architecture. You can add plugins, remove them as you want. So that's why uh, we wanted to do this, and we use this in our product. So now we're going to talk about some challenges that we've uh, uh, encountered uh, building that, this library. Uh, first, how to display a lot of data. That's one, an issue in the browser, you're limited by what you can do. Um, how to interact with those large, large graphs. 
and you want to do everything, uh, all, all of that with keeping the experience smooth. You don't want your user to feel laggy when he uses the interface. So, large graph. This is a small graph, so there's not a lot of nodes. You all have Neo4j, so you know what large graphs can be. Um, this graph is getting a bit larger. I don't know if you can make it out, but it's a representation of the Ubuntu packages. It's a sample from it. Uh, it's getting quite large, and you cannot see uh, a lot of things. And then, this is even larger. This is uh, uh, taken from the Steam community. Steam is a, a video, uh, video game platform. So this graph is about 200,000 uh, uh, 200, nodes. Uh, and it's displayed uh, right here. This is very large. Like when we, we're talking web browser, this is much larger than but, but you can do. So how can we display large graphs? Uh, first, you have to know that there is uh, three main technologies out there to display things in the browser. There's SVG, uh, Canvas, and WebGL. SVG is a vectorial um, rendering engine. Um, it's right, built in right out of the box in the browser. It's very useful because uh, there's a lot of built-in interactions. You can um, like use CSS with FG, SVG, so, so all the, um, the built-in things like rotating, animating, coloring, all out of the box. So that's very easy, but the counterpart is uh, you cannot display a lot of data with it. Uh, another technology, Canvas, is um, like rendering 2D pixels in the browser. So uh, there's less built-in interactions. It's a bit more complicated to use. But uh, then you have a um, little more uh, rendering speed. You can do more things in the browser. And finally, the most powerful thing is WebGL. WebGL is um, based on 3D. You can do 3D things with it. Um, so there's a lot less built-in interactions. Like when you want to interact with your visualization, you have to do everything by yourself. And so it takes a lot of time uh, in development. And it's quite complicated to grasp. Like the learning curve is uh, pretty long. So what we can do, uh, linker.js is built on the free technologies. You can swap between technologies according to your needs. So um, what we can do with SVG is like, uh, display 500 nodes, whereas with WebGL it's like 20,000 uh, nodes, so that's quite a big difference. But um, the, with WebGL you can do less things uh, about interacting with the data. You cannot uh, like drag multiple nodes or things like that because developing those plugins is possible but is much more costly than um, with Canvas or SVG for example. So Another challenge is uh, to enable graph inter interaction. So here is a little uh, interactive ex uh, example. So this is live from a browser. My, my presentation is made right in the browser, so I can show you live uh, how, it's, how it is. Uh, this is um, uh, uh, the Moroccan e-diaspora. E so what you can see here is um, the different websites that the Moroccans use to uh, communicator on the web. So here is uh, uh, here are blogs, for example. Uh, you got media set, media sites right here. And so interacting with the data would be like uh, zoom in, pan into the data. So here I can see that there's, for example, um, two very important points here because they're they're linking the two clusters, like the block cluster here and the output cluster here. So now I have uh, an idea of what can be important. But what can I can do is like filter the data so that I can reduce my graph. Everything is done in the browser and filter also by categories. So, you know, business site, that's not a lot of them. Like if I do blog, oh, you know, uh, you spot the thing. So this is interacting with the data. It's making it sensible for humans to uh, extract uh, intelligence out of it. So how, how, how is this graph made interactive? 
the main thing, the main problem uh, with Canvas and WebGL is uh, the very basic stuff is to know you've got your mouse somewhere, you got an object displayed. How to, do you know that your mouse is on that object? This is basic. So basic solution is you move the mouse. Each, ta each time you move the mouse, it will test the mouse position. Take an element, check if a mouse is on it, and you do that for all the elements. That's the very basic solution, but uh, when, well, when you get a lot of elements in the graph, it will take a lot of time. So uh, one solution is to do indexing. So what, what is indexing? It's uh, dividing uh, the space into subspaces and having uh, each node assigned to a space. So here, uh, this in, uh, indexing method is called Quadtree. So we divide the space into four subspaces and we assign uh, nodes uh, at each spaces. So here we have a node, we assign it into a, a subtree, a tree that represents the space. Uh, here we have another node, we assign it to another node. And then what we shall do is divide each subspace in another four subspaces. So that way, you build a tree that will be able to um, enable much faster lookup in the, um, to know if you're on a, on a node or not. So if I take uh, for ex this example, so this, this is supposed to represent a mouse, um, and I want to know if it's on uh, this node. So what are we going to do? First, we're going to say, well, this is obvious. It's in the big square, so it's at the root. It's also in this square, so it corresponds to this point in the tree. Well, it's also in this square, so it's in this tree. And now we just have to test all the nodes that have been indexed in this square to know if they are in, uh, under our maps. So, Instead of going all the way to, uh, to test each node, you just have to do like three tests here and one test inside. So from like doing a lot of tests, when you have a lot of points in the graph, you're only going to do like four tests. So this is one solution. Um, however, uh, in the graph, there's not only nodes, there's also edges. And uh, the problem with this solution is that uh, when you got edges, it goes across several boxes. So this, uh, this way, it's not that efficient. So another structure that has structure that can be used is called uh, R-Tree. It's something that we are developing uh, for Sigma.js and uh, that will be uh, available soon. So R-Tree is something to, to optimize that. If you've got a question for, on R-Tree later, uh, I can explain more. So, just to put it into, uh, into a nutshell, uh, built-in interactions with LVG, uh, it's built right out, out of the box. What I've just explained, you just don't have to do it in SVG because the browser takes care of it. So that's wonderful. Um, but you can't like uh, show as many things as you would want. For Canvas, you have to do it, uh, but it's quite easy to implement. In WebGL, uh, you have to do it and it gets harder to implement. So that's why we have this uh, table. And uh, our final uh, challenge is to keep the UI responsive while we do this. So this is an example of uh, one of our product, which is Linkerius Enterprise, which uses Linkerius.js. Uh, why do I show you that? Is because we have a lot of things you can do uh, with uh, the graph, so and you have to keep it interactive. For example, you can compute layouts, you can um, display uh, colors on nodes, you can filter them, you can uh, put uh, icons on it, you can uh, um, search for closest uh, closest path between uh, nodes. So you have to do this and keep the ex experience smooth. So I'm going to take the the uh, example of a layout, uh, but first, um, how do we keep the things responsive? Uh, you have to know that in, uh, in 
in um, JavaScript, uh, everything is uh, monothreaded. That is to say, uh, you do one thing, then you do another thing, and you can't do uh, several things in the same time. Uh, there, there, is, there is something new uh, about JavaScript called web workers. Uh, it's a way to parallelize things. So the way it works is first you create a web worker, uh, a web worker does a lot of things, and then it sets back the results to the main thread. So that's a way to have things computed in the background without having to interfere with your main thread and um, to keep it well responsive. The layout example is, uh, why is it very exp expensive to do a layout? Because um, the layout consists in uh, ordering um, the nodes to in the graphical space so that uh, you can make sense of the data. So uh, right out of the box, unless you have spatial data, uh, a graph is, isn't specialized. So one of the main uh, uh, issue in graph visualization is being capable of rendering um, the, the nodes and edges in a manner that a humans can read it uh, very easily. So I'm going to present you what is a force diversity layout. Uh, so here you have a random graph layout. Uh, so it's, it's not represented in a particular way. When you apply the layout, what it will do, it will modelize like nodes, like particles, um, so that they repulse each other, and edges are springs. So springs will tie them together. That way, when you have a random graph, uh, the way it will work, it will li be like uh, you tighten everything a lot, and then you just uh, release it, and all the nodes will float around until they take a nickel grim position. So this is an example. This is completely in unlisable. Like uh, you cannot make sense of that. So this is completely raw data with uh, random x and y generated things. When I apply a layout, it gets progressively into order. Like it's animating itself so that you can uh, you can make more sense of it. Like you get clusters. Um, with colors, and while it's still calculating, here um, it, uh, the layout is being calculated in the background, I can still zoom in, zoom out, and pan the data without any bugs. Like, it's completely smooth. So this is why it's important to use web workers, so that you can do se several things in the same time. So obviously, it also depends on your laptop or uh, hardware, but uh, can do a lot of cool things with that. So uh, as a conclusion, uh, I think we can sum all what I told into uh, several points. Uh, first, uh, here is uh, what you can make out of different technologies. So when you have to choose between um, the different technologies that you will be using to uh, make graph visualization, you have to keep in, in mind this table. Like, uh, if you don't want to display a lot of data, you can go for 8VG. Like, it's, it's completely all right, and it will work fine. Uh, if you want to display a lot, lot, lot of data at the same time, you will need to go with WebGL, but it will be uh, much more expensive to develop something uh, thorough in which, in which you could interact uh, thoroughly. Uh, and then two, uh, two advice, I would say when you deal with uh, visualization and uh, graph in general. Um, don't hesitate to optimize uh, data structure to improve performance. Sometimes the, the simple, uh, simple uh, approach does work when you have not a lot of data, but when you want to scale, uh, it's, it will not be enough. Um, and then finally, uh, use web workers when you need to compute uh, things that are heavy and so that you want to keep your UI responsive. Thank you very much.